Okay, project for the day. I have my old reliable steel string trimmer, FS90R, had it for quite a few years, and I really love it, works great, except that it's really a pain in the butt, in my opinion, to deal with the, um, the spool, the hub, the head, whatever we're calling this thing. I suppose it would be properly called a bump feed head. I imagine it even has a model number, but off the top of my head I don't know what it is. Obviously it's well used here, it's just covered with dried on grass juice. This actually works well and it still works well. The problem I have is it's sort of a pain to change the line when the line needs changing. And uh, at least with my arthritic fingers trying to push these very stiff buttons in to get it open every time I need to change the line is a problem. I'm getting to be more so all the time. Now I was googling around to see if there were any better heads that might fit this and um, thanks to the YouTube channel of Chick Canic, Chick Canic, it's like Chick and Mechanic, you get it? Right. So she had recommended the Shindawa Speed Feed 400, sort of universal uh, head that should fit all sorts of these. And they have, a, I think, a 450 or something that's maybe more for more professional machines, but this seems to be the, the main one. I forget what it cost, $20, $25 or something on Amazon. Readily available anyway, not too expensive. So in this video I'm going to just detail how I uh, go about changing this head. Okay, so I've managed to push the buttons in. So now this lifts off and if this is turned so the tabs, sorry I don't have better illumination here, but you turn it till the the bump reel lifts out and you're left with this. So this is the steel version of the eyelet. Some of these bump feed heads have an actual round eyelet and some of them have these U-shaped arrangements. And down in there is the arbor. And somewhere on here should be, well there's the grease fitting, which I haven't greased recently. And then there's, I think this is the hole here where you stick something in to lock the head so that it can be unscrewed from the arbor. Well, I was having too much trouble with glare and contrast working in the garage, so I moved into my basement shop. First thing I'm gonna do is use an air duster to get all the grass clippings and stuff out of there. All right, I have this uh, Phillips screwdriver. Don't know what size it is, it's sort of a medium size and uh, it seems to go right into that slot and now I just need to turn the head until it drops in which it just did there so now the head is locked and uh, looking at it from this side the rotation of the head needs to be counterclockwise took two hands to get it started but Okay, so the head is off, and this plate comes off. Now this is the greasy side here, which means it goes towards the gearbox, because that's the greasy side, and the relatively smooth clean side was the one that went up to the clean area here, and this raised area, which I didn't know, but the uh, Chicanic 
pointed out in her video that this is to put a blade on if you're going to put a, a blade on there instead of the string trimmer head the blade has an opening or a hole that fits around this raised whatever that's called flange whatever so you always want to make sure you don't put it on some other way it should go that way and um, I'm going to take this opportunity to just clean a little of this gunk out of here okay that's cleaned up within reason as is this so now I'm going to cut this open it doesn't appear to be one of those that you can just peel open maybe it is a tear open pack don't need to use the scissors on it there is uh, no instructions there but it does say that it can hold up to 20 feet of 0 0.095 line and it comes with some line and a bunch of accessories there is a um, plate or bushing rather and this thing and a wadded up set of instructions that's what you get well I'll take this out of the picture too that's what you get. Interesting. I'm going to look into this a little bit more. Shindai, Shindaiwa, not Shindawa, Shindaiwa. Um, hmm. Fits most Shindaiwa DeWalt Echo. Husqvarna, Milwaukee, Ryobi Steel, Red Max. So at least it should have that stuff on it. And it mentions fits most string trimmer brands. And it lists a whole bunch more. Bolens, DeWalt, Dolmar, Echo, Gas and Electric, Fco. Green Machine, Honda, Home Light, Husqvarna, John Deere, John Sered, Mar uh, Maruyama, Makita, McCullough, Milwaukee, MTD Pro, Poulon Pro, Red Max, Remington, Ryobi Gas and Electric, Shindaiwa, Snapper, Steel Gas and Electric, Sears, Craftsman, Tanaka, Toro, Troy Built, Weed Eater, Gas Only, and Yardman. But then they tell you to look at Echo USA for more details. And indeed, this little insert says this product is made in the USA. Echo Incorporated, Lake Zurich, Illinois, in my same county where I live. So, that's interesting. I would have assumed this was made in Japan or China. All right, moving on. And there we are again, Shindaiwa, Echo Incorporated, Lake Zurich, Illinois. Huh. But then it says, Yamabiko Corporation of Japan. So, is Echo owned by Yamako, uh, Yamabiko, or is it the other way around, or is it just a manufacturing distribution partnership? I don't know. Not important to the main thrust of this video. So the package contents includes the universal speed feed head, um, various bushings, and uh, arbors, whatever these things are. Let's see. So H, yeah, so these are mounting studs, they say. And these things are bushings. And this piece doesn't even seem to be, oh, it's a spacer, reversible nylon spacer. And this part is N and P on the parts list. It's a, a bushing, well, yeah, okay, the bushing's already in it. And then it has a white core, so it's a bushing and core combined. 
but I don't believe I need that for the steel. So after uh, locking it, which I already did, and removing the existing head, I make sure to reuse the plate here during the reassembly. Select and install the mounting hardware. Use the speed feed application chart. Now we go to uh, French and Spanish instructions, and then we get the speed feed mounting chart. Okay, the speed feed LHRH trimmer head application chart. Double checking my model, it's an FS90R. So I go to the steel part and uh, there's an FS90 here. Is there a similar number up here? No, it jumps from FS86 to FS100. So according to this I should be using reference LH2 and then we flip to the other side and LH2 says we're supposed to use the gold colored supposed to use the gold bushing and the 10 millimeter by 8 millimeter spacer which is silver in colored so I guess it means use this and the gold bushing is already in there so the gold bushing silver spacer And then it says, if your brand and model is not listed, match the existing mounting hardware just by farting around with it, I guess. Or call them or email them or whatever. The gold bushing used with LH1, LH2, and LH2 is pre-installed in the trimmer head. If required, install the new mounting stud into the threaded hole in the gear case. Well, I can't exactly do that. I know what they're talking about, so maybe that's not applicable. This doesn't go exactly the way that Chicanic described. She obviously has a different model that works a bit differently. So I've pulled these two parts off of the head, just using the normal method of squeezing in the bumpers or the, uh, the little tabs. So I believe the first thing I need to do is put this back on this way. Well, that's in unfortunate. That's better. And then I'm supposed to put the bushing on, I think. I'm going to figure this out. Uh huh. Well, that's a disappointment. I guess it's not universal then. <laughs> well, I mean, I only own this one string trimmer. I'm not going to buy a whole new one just so your head fits on it. You know, it lists it's so many models, it's like, how can it not fit the one that I happen to have? <laughs> There's got to be a way for it to work. Well, like I said, the green, the green bushing that comes with it does thread on, and I'm really thinking that might work, but I'm uncertain then if I need to use the reversible nylon spacer or not. And if so, does it matter which way I put it on? There's nothing in the instructions describing that. So I just used this nut driver 
and tapping on it with a hammer to drive that gold bushing out. And now, since the green is the only one that's included that looks like it's going to thread onto here, I just have to remember that the direction is opposite on these. You turn it right or clockwise to get it off. I'll drop that guy in here. And I'll use the same nut driver to push it back in. So it's like that. And now that should, by turning it counterclockwise, thread on. But it doesn't go all the way down. It stops before I get to that point. So maybe I need to use the spacer. Hmm. Um, presumably... Well, that doesn't center, so let's try it this way. That does center. So I'm going to try that again. Oops. Counterclockwise. I don't know. Does it go in there very far? It goes in some. So I'm going to um, lock the head again or lock the gearbox and screw that head on. Okay, that's about as far as it would go. And the uh, steel threaded shaft or arbor or whatever we're calling it goes most of the way in there so I think it's probably okay. Everything turns freely. So I'm going to assume that that's appropriate at this point. Now, I didn't include it but a very frustrating phone call. They've got this number 800-432-3246 and first off there was no option on there it's all these things are you a dealer are you an echo repairman are you this are you that and finally it gets down to do you have an electric powered product or a gas powered product so it's like well the product i bought from you is neither it's a universal supposedly head and uh but i pushed gas because maybe that would narrow it down because it's a gas string trimmer and I got a gal who sounded like she was about 13 years old who seemed to have no idea what I was talking about and just sort of mumbled something about, well, just follow the chart, you know. And I pointed out that the chart has a, <clears throat> a 90, a steel FS90, but I have an FS90R, and what do I do about that, you know. I could guess my way and, you know, improvise a solution using the parts available but I'd rather have their input. And she's like, no, we just don't have anything like that. So the much vaunted, so the much promoted, you know, hey, it's universal and uh, I've got a major brand trimmer here that's old enough where it should be included in the options. I can't believe they only made two of these things. So you think that Shindaiwa would have a solution that works and maybe what I podged together here or bodged together is the solution so we'll go from here but disappointing tech support you know she's like well maybe you could go to an echo dealer somewhere and one of their technicians could figure it out so thanks for nothing I do observe that the very generic instructions say if required place the reversible spacer that's that one in there on the base plate of the gear case, which should be this. Matching spacer recess to pilot diameter of the base plate, which I already showed in this video. When spacer is properly matched and installed, there should be no gap between the spacer and the base plate, and there isn't. <clears throat> so attach the new trimmer head. Thread the LH trimmer head counterclockwise onto the mounting stud, which I already did. Thread the right hand trimmer head on clockwise. But, 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 I'm confused again. 
this is the only trimmer head that I'm aware of and it's supposed to work with left-handed and right-handed I think it says LH right LHRH here in the instructions and there's only one part number and the chart does show some right-hand solutions and some left-hand solutions lots of left-handed solutions so I don't actually understand what they're talking about when they refer to a right-hand head and a left-hand head anyway <clears throat> so I guess they're not actually saying the head itself is inherently left-handed or right-handed they're talking about after you've assembled all the bushings and things then it becomes one or the other I think that's what they mean they could have worded that better remove locking tool from gear case which I did if necessary cut trimmer lines so length does not extend beyond the cutoff blade of the debris shield to feed trimmer line bump the bottom okay that's all normal stuff so now there's a different set of instructions on the flip side oop, that's in French I know I saw it Ah, loading instructions, okay. So, um, this head here does have um, <clears throat> L's on it and R's on it. And I believe that indicates which way you should be facing towards the user. And since I've got this set up as a left-handed cutter head, I believe that the L side should be facing up and this cross beam goes down in there. What happens if I do it the other way? Well, it doesn't go down very far. That can't be right. So, I guess this is the way it goes. And, um, Let me mess with this a little bit more. Assuming that's right, I should now be able to just stick this down in here. And I'm pushing against the spring there. And it does snap in there. And the head does bump. So I think that means it's correct. And now, I'm supposed to be aligning these little uh, arrow-shaped or angular protrusions with the um, eyelets. And to do that, I have to hold this part and turn this part. Yeah, so I just held this with one hand and this with one hand, turned it in this direction, and it just sort of pops from detent to detent until the eyelet lines up, and you can see that there's a hole that goes straight through when it's in this orientation. Now this um, trimmer is supposed to work with 95 or 105 line, in other words 0 0.095 or 0 0.105 line. I don't know which kind it comes with. The uh, steel line I usually use is 0 0.095. Anyway, so you're supposed to just get your line, so I've got the stuff it came with, and feed it straight through one side to the other like that and that's the part that's supposed to make this so much easier than the regular ones you don't have to take the darn head apart to refeed it when you run out of line you just reorient the eyelets to the uh, the arrow stick a new line through don't have to cut it in half first like steel wants you to or requires you to and uh, then I'm just sort of trying to get it approximately even. Okay, so I've, with the requisite length of line, it's just enough for me to hold the two ends in one hand, outstretched arms, and hold the head with the other hand. It's not strictly necessary, but this is the way I'm trying to do it. And now I've grabbed it there so that it doesn't slip. And now, 
well, I can't actually hold it, I don't have three hands, but now you're supposed to hold the bottom and turn this to reel it up. So I'm holding the top steady and turning the bottom. At least until it gets started. And now I can kind of do this where I turn it counterclockwise on the bottom, then hold the top and turn it clockwise while I turn the bottom counterclockwise. And it's winding the cord up into it. And we can see that it's reeled in most of the line now. So that should be ready to use. All right, so I've cranked the line in a bit more so it's a bit on the short side. That way I can test the bump feed right away. So that seemed to have worked just fine in spite of the issues with the instructions being incomplete. So I would call that a successful arrangement. The bump feed works fine. It loads line like it should and it fits the steel FS90R using that off-reservation <laughs> uh, combination of parts.